Hello, dear students. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome again to my class, Intermediate Review Skills. Before I begin, let us express our gratitude to Allah SWT by saying, Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. And then we also praise the Prophet Muhammad SAW by saying, Allahumma sholli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama sholli ta'ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim fil alamin and baka hamidun ma'asid. Uh, before I begin this class, uh, I'd like to remind you that uh, this is our 13th uh, meeting for this semester. Uh, semester genap tahun 2020-2021. Mata kuliah intermediate reading skill. Uh, dengan saya tentunya ya. So, uh, kita melaksanakan popular ini secara asinkronus. Artinya saya uh, live di Youtube. Uh, live dalam artian kita sama-sama menyaksikan penjelasan ini jika ada pertanyaan nanti silakan ditulis di bagian kolom uh, live chat ke bagian uh, komen di sana juga nanti akan saya berikan link ke pada absensi untuk uh, perkuliahan ini for my general viewers of this channel you are allowed to give comment or feedback about my explanation all right dear students uh, our topic today covers about um, details, details in reading text. Okay, now before I consume too much time, uh, oh, before I start, I'd like to inform you that I'm going to speak for about an hour, uh, 60 minutes. So if you would like to pause, you can pause that or if you have any question while I'm explaining about this material, please do so by typing your comment or question in the comment section. Jadi kalau ada pertanyaan di salah-salah saya menjelaskan, silakan tuliskan di bagian komentar. Baik, daripada berlama-lama, saya akan display tentang details. Nah, ini topik atau tema tentang details. Uh, seperti kita lihat, as you can see it's right here. Uh, we have the details, intermediate reading skills, karena ini sifatnya adalah uh, reading skill. And then this is our 13th meeting. The focus or the theme of this meeting is about details for students in TBIA and TBIB. Semester genap 2020-2021. So please listen carefully uh, so you would have a clear sense of understanding about details. Karena nanti ini akan saya tanyakan dan ujikan kembali di akhir semester genap, di ujian akhir semester. Karena kita mungkin tidak ada portfolio, tidak ada tugas uh, final project, kita ada tugas uh, ujian akhir semester. All right, so I start this uh, explanation by going to this quotation. I'd like to show you uh, like this one. Okay. So as you can see, we have here, um, oh, starting over. Okay. So the first one is understanding what is details. Nah, jadi sebelum kita belajar, tentu kita harus memahami terlebih dahulu apa yang dimaksud dengan details. Uh, apa details? Seperti kita lihat di display, detail ini saya sengaja menggunakan huruf S. Ini menunjukkan uh, sifat dari kosakata ini, yaitu plural atau jamak. Kata detail di dalam bahasa Inggris ada di UK and in the US. Kalau UK, bunyinya seperti ini: detail, detail, tapi kalau di US. Detail, jadi pendek nih ya. Detail, detail. Show me the detail. Itu British UK. Tapi kalau misalnya US, detail. I will tell you the detail. She let me know the detail of the situation. Kalau di British, she let me know the detail of the situation. So things like that. Seperti itu bunyinya kalau British and American. Kedua-duanya sebenarnya sama. Eh, mana kecenderungan kita memilih bunyi yang kita suka. 
apakah pronunciation atau kita suka British, American or British. So sorry for that. Uh, B1, let's see, this is countable, kata detail, dalam bentuk noun, kalau uh, temanya atau berhubungan dengan information, maka didefinisikan sebagai a single piece of information or fact about something. Ini yang harus digaris bawahi. A single piece of information or fact about something. Jadi di sini digaris bawahi uh, dalam bentuk sebuah informasi yang single satu uh, tunggal atau fakta tentang sesuatu it, it could be uh, real or abstract fact about something jadi diberinya contoh ini saya ambil dari Cambridge Advanced Learner's Dictionary so although it has intellectual property in it but I I display this just to show that I use this material and I took it from Cambridge Advanced Learner's Dictionary The credit goes to Cambridge Advanced Learner's Dictionary, but in this video, the credit goes to me because I'm explaining it. I'm using the Cambridge to support my description. Okay, now the first word, detail, is considered as countable. C stands for countable, karena dianggap countable, yaitu noun, kata benda yang bisa dihitung. A single piece of information or fact about something. Contoh kalimatnya adalah She insisted on telling me every single detail of what they did to her in hospital. We don't know the full or precise details of the story yet. Yang contoh ketiga She refused to disclose or divulge any details about or of the plan. Nah, kita bisa menyebutnya seperti ini. She insisted on in telling me every single detail of what they did to her in hospital. Yang kedua, we don't know the full details of the story yet. We don't know the precise details of the story yet. Nah, ketika di sini saya mengucapkan kata detail, detail berarti saya berbicara dengan menggunakan British uh, pronunciation. Nah, look at this one, detail. Detail, detail. So, D-nya lebih pendek dibandingkan D yang di uh, British, D yang di American maksud saya. Yang ketiga, she refused to disclose any details about the plan. Atau, she refused to divulge any details of the plan. Nah, ini berarti dinamakan uh, kata details yang uh, mengarah kepada single piece of information. Right. Nah, jadi di sini paham ya bahwa kata details terkategori ke dalam kata benda noun yang mengarah kepada uh, informasi. Nah, sekarang kita lihat uh, berikutnya masih uh, kata details dikategorikan sebagai information dalam bentuk plural details with s bahkan menjadi details detail. Details, detail, details, detail, detail, details. Seperti itu ya. Nah, kita lihat ini artinya information about someone or something. Jadi, details, information about someone. Nah, di sini details ini artinya informasi tentang detail yang ada di dalam teks. Makanya dia menggunakan S. Contohnya adalah, can I have your details? Sample name and address, etc. Please. Kalau ada orang bertanya, um, native speakers yang bertanya kepada kalian nanti seperti ini. Can I have your details, please? Uh, could I know your details, please? Atau misalnya, I've sent for, I've sent off for the details of the job I saw advertised in the paper. Hmm. Ini berarti masuk ke dalam uh, ranahnya. Uh, details tentang seseorang, someone atau pelamaran pekerjaan. I've sent off for the I've sent off for the details of a job I saw advertised in the paper. Yang ketiga, a police officer took down the details of what had happened. A police officer took down the details of what happened. Nah, kalau saya menyebutnya dengan American accent seperti ini. A police officer took down the details of what happened. 
details details of what happened okay. jadi detail di sini took down ini maksudnya mengambil catatan kemudian um, keterang-keterangan segala macamnya berarti uh, kata details di sini plural ya ya kita lanjut um, dikatakan seperti ini uncountable masih kategori details yang bermakna information didefinisikan sebagai the small features of something that you only notice when you look carefully. Jadi bagian-bagian kecil dari sesuatu small features that you only notice when you look carefully. Nah, seperti misalnya I have this uh, this object. Ini saya punya objek ini. Um, this is Indonesian aircraft. Indonesian handicraft. Saya not aircraft. Indonesian handicraft kerajinan tangan. Indonesia. So, the first one is this batik. Yeah, batik. But if you pay closely uh, your attention to this object, you will find that the color it has uh, pieces of gold in it, sparkling, yeah, sparkling. So it's right over here. See, if you if you notice that the color it looks uh, there's sparkling in it, right? It's, it's a bit of interesting to really uh, to have this and you know, using it like this. So, right. Um, the small features of something that you only notice when you look carefully. Now, this is the detail. This is what I call. If you see this object at first, you will only know that this is a fan, right? Um, is this a fan like this? And then um, this made of bamboo, bamboo, yeah, this one, um, bamboo wood. And this is uh, batik. But if you pay close attention, there's something interesting that gold sparkle, sparkling in it. Yeah. More one, but see? But this is beautiful. I like this. This is this is the art of Indonesia. Of course, I love my country. Um Indonesia. Yeah. Um I was just admiring the detail in the doll's house. Even the thin, even the tins of food have levels on them. It is I for ability to notice detail that distinguishes him as a painter. Nah, jadi ini katanya uh, matanya lah yang bisa melihat detail yang membedakannya sebagai seorang pelukis. Nah, itu maknanya. Jadi small features of something. Saya kalau sebutkan seperti ini, I want to know the details about her. Show me the detail about that person. Berarti itu artinya keterangan yang lebih lengkap. Yang small features of something. Um, okay. And then the other word, kosa kata lainnya bisa kita gunakan dengan kata detail seperti misalnya ini. Including or considering all the information about something or every part of something. Nah, this is in detail. Sini maksudnya in detail. Excuse me. We haven't discussed the matter in detail yet. The book described her sufferings in graphic detail. He talked in great detail about the curtains he's chosen for his long. Ini berarti kata details harus diawali dengan um, preposition in. Yeah, in detail. Um, my teacher taught English to me in detail. Seperti itu. You cannot say detaily, no, karena kata detail bukan kata kerja. Kalau misalnya, bukan kata adjective, detail, detaily. It's, I've never heard any word detaily like that. We haven't discussed the matter in detail yet. Maknanya mungkin bisa detaily, tapi penulisannya adalah in detail. The book describes a suffering in graphic detail. Described. So this, the word described here means it is past tense, and the description had already happened in the past. And the description itself was about the suffering of um, of this woman, her, in the book, uh, graphically. So this is very interesting, very exciting about this. In detail, you need to uh, try to write a sentence by using this word, in detail. I can use that word, for example, the magazines reported the news uh, covering the death in detail. See, you can use the word in detail. 
Moving on to the next one, uh, the word detail can also has can also have this one. Go into detail. To tell or include all the facts about something. I won't go into detail over the phone that I've been having to health problems recently. This is what it says. I won't go into detail over the phone, but I have been having a few health problems recently. Ini artinya to tell or include all the facts about something. All the facts. So, bahasa Inggrisnya adalah go into detail. Contoh begini. Uh, anda mendengar salah satu teman Anda sakit selama 30, 2 bulan tidak masuk ke kuliah atau ke kampus. Lalu uh, kalian mendatangi rumah orang tuanya, tempat dia tinggal. Lalu kalian bisa bertanya kalau dalam bahasa Inggris, sekiranya orang tuanya bisa bahasa Inggris. Dan seperti ini, um, can I know what happened to your daughter? Um, she didn't come for about two months to campus. Orang tuanya bilang salah satu Let me let me go into detail about this. Jadi seperti itu. Um, to tell or include all the facts about something. All the fact. Somethingnya di sini apa? Apakah uh, tentang teman Anda atau sakitnya yang uh, membuat dia enggak kuliah 2 bulan? Jawabannya yang kedua, about something. This is also countable yang dianggap sebagai uh, noun information. A part of something that does not seem important. A part of something that does not seem important. As far as Tony is concerned, he's getting that car and finding the money to pay, or it is just a detail. Jadi, a part of something that does not seem important. Jadi, sebagian tertentu dari sesuatu yang tidak terlalu penting. Nah, itu disebut sebagai details. Okay. Um, as far as Tony is concerned, sejauh yang diyakini oleh Tony atau jadi perhatian Tony, he's getting that car, dia mendapatkan mobil tersebut, and finding the money, dan mendapatkan uangnya to pay for it, untuk membayar mobil tersebut, is just a detail. Hanya sebuah detail. Um, still the same word detail, we have word partners for detail, noun information, seperti ini. Jadi kalau misalnya kalian ingin membuat kalimat, bisa menggunakan padanan kosakata kata kerja seperti ini. Uh, Istilah-istilah seperti ini juga. Seperti misalnya, disclose details, sama discuss details, divulge details, reveal details. Nah, misalnya disclose details. Um, it is not permitted to open a formal envelope because you will be considered to do to disconsidered as someone who just disclosing details, who doesn't cause any details. So that's a sample. Uh, discuss details, divulge de details, and reveal details. Contoh so, berikutnya adalah spare. Spare somebody the details. Sama artinya dengan memberikan keterangan pada sesama dengan Exact details, full details, precise details, and relevant details. Kata berikutnya adalah final or further the latest details, a minor detail, blurry details, attention to details, details about something or details of something or details on something. You can say details about Bali Island, for example, or details of uh, Nicole Kidman, things like that, details of that. And the details on uh, Mariah Carey, for example. So, itu berkaitan dengan contoh. The details, keterangan lengkap, ya. Uh, from Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary. Kata details, juga beberapa contoh lainnya seperti ini. The model, the model of the village is accurate down to the last detail. He forgot to tell you one important detail. is married. It's only a detail, but could, could you just add the office phone number at the top of the page? Her paintings are almost photographic in their detail and accuracy. There is one small detail you've got wrong in your report. Nah, ini contoh dari beberapa kosa kata yang menggunakan kata detail. Boleh silakan ditulis. Details yang dalam bentuk kata kerja, nah ingat. Kalau tadi adalah kata benda, 
Sekarang adalah kata kerja. Kata kerja, remember this. Kata kerja. Ini kan kerja nih. Nah, kata kerja adalah kata menunjukkan aktivitas tertentu. Kalau sebagai kata kerja, kata di pel satunya to describe something completely, giving all the facts. Plus question word. Can you produce report detailing what you've spent on the project so far? Ini artinya bisa kamu menghasilkan, menghasilkan laporan yang menjelaskan secara detail tentang apa-apa saja uh, yang kita belanjakan di dalam proyek sejauh ini. Nah, contohnya kalau menggunakan present simple, I detail, you detail, he or she it details with us, we detail and they detail. Jadi hanya yang he she it tadi yang menggunakan kata yang menggunakan akhir S. Uh, sementara dalam bentuk present simple, we have detailing. Past simple, we have details. And past participle, we have details the same. So it depends on how you use the word detail. If it means that you want to show it already happened in the past, then you can use past simple or past participle. Past participle, situation that happens in the past. Meanwhile, past participle, detail, it means that It has happened um, throughout different places. Okay. All right. So now let's see. We have an another. Oh, hold on. Um, wait for a minute. I have to take something. I'll be right back. Okay, I come back. Um, I'm taking this one off. Sorry, I have to show you that I'm drinking because drinking is important for your body and it's very healthy. My friend told me that. Um, I'm not gonna tell you his name. <laughs> He likes the sport so much. Um, to order someone, often a small group of soldiers or workers, to perform a particular task. Nah, ini contoh kisah kata lainnya yang menggunakan kata detail. 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 Sama. Tapi kalau um, American, dia di depan T. Detail. 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 <laughs> It's very interesting. Uh, kata kerja, he, he is right here with two infinitive, often passive. Biasanya dalam bentuk pasif, maknanya adalah order. To order someone, often a small group of soldiers or workers, to perform a particular task. Atau misalnya, four soldiers were detailed to take the road for troops. Jadi, kalau misalnya kalian menggunakan kata detail dalam bentuk uh, pasif seperti ini dan itu untuk past tense berarti maknanya adalah untuk memerintahkan seseorang atau beberapa kelompok uh, prajurit atau pekerja untuk melakukan sebuah pekerjaan tugas. So that's the way. That's just what it means if you use the word detail. Okay. Now um, ini penjelasan tentang makna kata detail. Jadi jangan uh, salah keliru nanti kalau misalnya kita apakah detail itu kata benda saja tidak detail juga bisa menjadi kata kerja if dan juga pasif seperti yang dijelaskan di sini kita masuk ke reading comprehension now basically uh, materi tentang ini berkaitan dengan reading comprehension involving six items so six uh, six uh, objects the first one is topic yang kedua adalah main idea, yang ketiga detail, for reference atau referensi, yang kelima adalah references atau inferensi, yang keenam adalah scanning. So, nah kita fokus ke sini ke detail. Ya, kenapa saya fokus ke detail? Karena sebenarnya eh, pada pengalaman saya mengajar beberapa eh, TOEFL, TOEFL paper based test. Untuk mahasiswa calon wisudawan uh, di kampus saya lama, ya, yang PGRI yang di Sumatera Barat, um, 
itu saya mengajar TOEFL Reading Comprehension, Structure and Written Expression, serta um, Listening. Pernah saya ajar seperti itu ya. Nah, khusus Reading Comprehension, yang paling banyak keluar itu biasanya adalah detail, topik, dan main idea. Nah, kalau yang ini, ini sebenarnya berkaitan langsung dengan teknis. Nah, I will go further tentang details. Meskipun ini mata kuliah intermediate brain skills, but I do hope that my explanation is very useful for the students. Details in the text, uh, kita ada lima item. Pertama, the use of adjective clause. Two, the use of preferred words. Three, the use of contrasting words or phrases. Four, the use of punctuation. Five, the use of examples. Jadi ada lima pokok idea yang ada di dalam details. Sementara untuk exercises atau boleh bisa saya bilang uh, supplementary, pertama identifying paraphrase, yang kedua adalah answering multiple choice, dan yang ketiga adalah recognizing contextual words. Ini berkaitan dengan konteks-konteks uh, yang ada di dalam uh, teks. I'm going to explain to you one by one sampai ke sini, nanti setelah itu kita akan uh, wrap it up, kita akan uh, mereview secara keseluruhan. Kita lihat yang pertama, use of adjective clause. Di sini dikatakan bahwa di dalam reading comprehension terdapat suatu jenis pertanyaan yang disebut dengan detail di mana jenis ini paling sering ditanyakan. Satu, bertanya mengenai sebagian kecil dari bacaan, jadi bukan bacaan secara keseluruhan yang kadang-kadang dapat diambil langsung dari uh, bacaannya. Untuk yang ini, jawaban dapat dicari langsung dari bacaan. Kirinya adalah informasi yang diungkapkan secara berurutan. Itu kalau yang nomor satu. Nah, kalau nomor dua, bertanya mengenai informasi tersurat yang diungkapkan dalam baca. Dengan demikian, diperlukan kejelian dalam mengartikannya. Sebagai petunjuk untuk jenis ini, perhatikan dengan cermat pengertiannya sebab kata-kata yang digunakan untuk menyampaikan tidaklah persis dengan yang terdapat dalam bacaan. Hal itu dinamakan dengan parafrasa, yaitu menyampaikan makna yang sama tetapi sedikit berbeda dalam pemakaian kosakata maupun kata bahasa. Kita mungkin tidak akan terlalu masuk ke sini, terlalu jauh, terlalu dalam. Saya akan hanya menjelaskan beberapa poin-poin penting yang berkaitan dengan detail dalam teks. Materi ini saya ambil dari sini, digunakan dari buku ini, buku terlengkap Toto. Ini ditulis oleh Panca Prastowo dan Sugito. Menurut saya ini cukup affordable, cukup terjangkau. Harganya 140000 ya, Sabi. Uh, kemudian, materi untuk latihannya cukup banyak ya, jadi bisa digunakan untuk belajar tentang TOEFL. Hmm, Oke, okay, kita lanjutkan. Yang pertama, the use of adjective clause. Kalimat-kalimat yang menunjukkan jawabannya ditandai dengan pemakaian relative pronoun, seperti that, who, which, whom, when, where. Nah, contohnya adalah, Airships, which are cigar-shaped, steerable balloons, have many uses, such as filming, advertising, and entertainment. Jadi kalau misalnya ditanya, what is airship? Jawabannya adalah cigar-shaped, steerable balloons. Ini jawabannya. So, if people ask you, what is airship? Well, they are cigar-shaped, steerable balloons. Karena ada kata which. Kosa kata which ini mengganti posisi dari airship. It replaces the airship like this one. That's the adjective clause. We're going to study further about this in our next meeting, right? Meeting 14, so group one, group two, and three. 14, 15, 16. Um, the use of referred words. Referred word kata acuan dapat digunakan untuk menerangkan kata lainnya, baik yang terletak sebelum maupun setelah kata acuan. Contoh. The solar-powered batteries in the ERS ERS1 are expected to function for at least two years, during which time the satellite will be able to gather more information than any previous satellite. Kalau ditanya seperti ini ERS, what is ERS1? Jawabannya adalah ERS1 is satellite it's right here during which time the satellite will be The satellite, the, karena pengen kata the, dan untuk definite noun, 
maka dia mengarah ke ELS1. The, the solar powered batteries berarti bukan solar powered batteries jawabannya karena baterai ini ada di dalam ERS1. Justru ini adalah satelit. Selanjutnya nomor 3, the use of contrasting words or phrases. Beberapa kata yang bermakna pertentangan seperti but, however, in contrast, or whereas, despite, instead, in spite of, unlike, and although dapat digunakan untuk menjelaskan kata lainnya. Contoh, the brief scenes in the movie focus on the boy's point of view, whereas the longest scenes depict the father's side. It's interesting, right? Uh, this is what it says. Jadi, um, the brief scenes in the movie focus on the boy's point of view. Jadi, Boys point of view ini sudut pandang anak laki-laki tersebut ya yang ada di dalam film. Whereas sementara the longest scene jadi uh, adegan yang sangat panjang depict mencerminkan atau menunjukkan atau menunjukkan sisi dari uh, seorang uh, ayah misalnya father side. Ini contrasting words or phrases. Jadi yang berfungsi sebagai contrasting words atau phrase di sini adalah whereas. Kan ada ini but however in contrast Or whereas, despite, instead, in spite of, unlike, and all whereas. Selanjutnya, the use of punctuation. Tanda baca seperti koma, dash, parenthesis, so tanda kurung, dan sebagainya dapat digunakan untuk menunjukkan makna suatu kata. Seperti ini. In lesser printing, the greater the number of DPI dots per inch, the higher the quality of the image produced. Berarti penggunaan kata DPI dots per inch ini artinya berfungsi menunjukkan makna dari in lesser painting DPI dots per inch. Nah ini ini um, dots per inch ini adalah kepanjangan dari DPI. So DPI is abbreviation. Ini contohnya. Selanjutnya uh, the use of examples. Excuse me, I'm drinking. Use of examples. <coughs> Excuse me. Kata atau ungkapan yang sering digunakan untuk menyebutkan contoh seperti such as, like, for example, for instance, dapat dipakai untuk menunjukkan makna suatu kata. Jadi, ketika kita menemukan teks yang menggunakan such as, like, for example, for instance, ini berarti percussion instruments such as drums, Uh, Simblas and tambourines were the preferred instruments in the study. Nah, jadi menggunakan kata ini such as such as ni dia such as drums, cymbals and tambourines. Ya menjelaskan dari ini percussion instruments. Nah, kita masuk ke supplementary materials. The first one is identifying paraphrase. Number two, answering multiple choice. Number three, recognizing contextual words. Lihat, number one, A, identifying paraphrases. The book of Kafka's writings was not published until after his early death from tuberculosis. Tuber, tuberculosis, tuberculosis. Hmm, I'm going to check how to pronounce that. Tuberculosis or tuberculosis? <laughs> okay, now let's see, we move on for that one. We skip that one first, okay? Now, A, It was not until after Kafka's early death from tuberculosis the book of his writing was published. B. After the book of his writing was published, Kafka died an early death from tuberculosis. C. After Kafka had written the book of his published writings, he met with an early death from tuberculosis. C. Uh, sorry, D. An early death from tuberculosis kept Kafka from publishing the book of his writing. Nah, sekarang kita tahu, was not published. Okay, so that's the meaning of this sentence. The book of Kafka's writing was not published. Berarti artinya tidak, belum terjadi ter, terbit. After his early death from tuberculosis. Nah, answer A, jawabannya A. Kenapa A? Kita baca, it was not until after Kafka's early death from tuberculosis that the book of writing was published. Karena memang makna di kalimat ini setara dengan yang di atas. Jadi dua kalimat ini mereka sangat berkaitan. To answering multiple choice. Pragmatism essentially an American school of thought 
Ini kita baca terlebih dahulu passage ini, lalu ada pertanyaan yang kita jawab sama-sama. Tapi silakan dipahami konsepnya di sini. Pragmatism is essentially an American school of thought that has had few supporters elsewhere. Had few. Pragmatism believes that the test of any belief should be its practical consequences. One of the first pragmatists, William James, wrote that it was impossible to discover the real world outside our senses, and therefore we must concern ourselves primarily with human experience. Because the world would be a worse place without a belief in human responsibility, morals, and the freedom of will, it was necessary, he considered, to believe in this concept. Okay, now let's see. According to the passage, pragmatism is a popular worldwide, B, impossible to discover, C, an American philosophy, D, primarily a human experience. What would you think the best answer for sector num for, uh, number two? Mm -hmm. Okay, the number is, um, well, let's see, popular worldwide. Fragment believe that in practical consequences. Okay, an American philosophy. Okay, so that would be the answer. An American philosophy. So this is what it says. Pragmatism is essentially an American school of thought. See? American school of thought. That's why it becomes an American philosophy. Three. The word, um, I have six sentences that I display to you in relation to recognizing contextual words. The first one is, a porcupine is a large climbing rodent that is covered with sharp spines for defense. Number two. Okay, so let's move better. If this from Fakultas Ilmu Budaya, Universitas Jenderal Sudirman, karena sudah membantu menjadi review, salah satu reviewer dan juna editor. Thank you, uh, Universitas Jenderal Sudirman. Happy to work with you. Okay, continue this one. Um, recognizing contextual words. A, a porcupine is a large climbing rodent that is covered with sharp spines for defense. Two, altitude or the height above sea level is a factor that determines climate. It's a uh, worker is uh, working on constructing my house, so just uh, be patient for a while. Uh, number three, creatures such as the camel and the penguin are so highly specialized that they can only live in certain areas of the world. Mm, okay. Jadi kalau ditanya misalnya kata camel and penguin, what are they? They are creatures living in certain areas of the world. Kalau misalnya ditanya, what is altitude? So the answer is the high above sea level. That's, that's the meaning of the altitude. Sementara kalau ditanya, what is porcupine? You can answer that by saying, a uh, porcupine is a large climbing rodent that is covered with sharp spines for defense. If you find this in the option, then you need to choose this one. Number four, hypoxia is an illness caused by a deficiency of oxygen in tissue of her body. Uh, deficiency of kurang udara ya, berarti agak sedikit uh, mengkerut dia itu. In the tissue of her body. So what is hypoxia? Is an illness caused by lambdansophone. Number five, in some American Indian tribe, the squirrel or woman was the owner of all property. So if, you, if you're if you being uh, questioned about this word squirrel, squirrel, so the best answer would be woman because uh, she owned all the property. Let's, let's do how you answer the question. Number six, intensity, loudness, or softness depends on the context or amplitude of a vibration. Yeah? So what is intensity? The meaning of intensity is uh, amplitude of vibration. That's the way the key. Nah, itulah contoh-contoh dari supplementary material yang berkaitan dengan uh, reading details. Dari pada point-point seperti itu. Okay, so if you have no question, then I'll stop share here. Nah, jadi itulah konsep-konsep yang berkaitan dengan uh, details di dalam reading comprehension. So, uh, let me make it uh, clear to you that the best uh, function of 
uh, understanding text through this way will help you to find the details that you will need when you write your thesis later on. Okay, so I'll be coming back to my online classroom on Wednesday with all of you, TBI A and TBI B students. We're going to let group one, group two, and group three in our 14th, 15th, and 16th meeting. So group three will be the last group to present in our class. So far, um, I, if, you have, if you have any question and feedback, you can write down in the comment section below. It's very wide open. I will let, I let you know to do that. And uh, please check the live chat because I'm going to send you the link to that area. Okay, have a good day. Uh, I hope you get the learning material from there because we only have two credits. I'll see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye.